Hey, I'm going to try to uh, demonstrate these filters that there's been much talk about recently and see if we can't uh, get a real feel for exactly what's going on with them in the gain staging in the filters. I'm actually finding that the filters, while different, odd, if you will, having some odd characteristics, they're actually one of the more exciting factors of the JDXA. So I started out with a completely initialized patch. It's all analog. Um, I don't even have it on power right now. It's just an analog model, straight off slaves. The only thing I've done is I've uh, transposed the keyboard down one octave just so I can get some real bottom, uh, some real girth. So that sounds pretty cool. So as you're probably aware, there are, let's see, one, two, three, four, five filters, analog filters um, on the JDXA, three, low pass filters, a high pass, and a band pass. Um, what's interesting, I would say that low pass filter one is just a very basic low pass filter. Uh, if we employ it, surprising about that. It sounds decent. Um, I don't know if you can see it from here, but there's a little LED indicator indicating it's a 24 dB slope on that filter. Uh, and it sounds traditional. Nothing about the resonance or the gain staging is surprising about that filter. Let's move it over to low pass filter 2, which is more of like a Moog ladder filter. Uh, also a 24 dB slope on it. Um, this one clearly, as a lighter filter would, has uh, some more depth, some more rasp, um, and you can hear it pretty much straight up. Let's just listen to that all the way open. Let's drop that resonance. Introducing resonance. Introducing resonance seems to me to do uh, two things, which some ladder filters do, some don't. Introducing resonance seems to dip the gain overall of the signal, um, but it brings in a pleasant tone. So what you end up needing to have to do, you get that tone, give it a little extra band to compensate for it, sort of a little compression, if you will. In a little dynamics processing. Until it gets very, very high, does it start to distort uh, or squeal as a filter would any filter with high resonance, certainly a louder filter. Uh, a lot of character in this filter. In fact, I'd probably say this one is one of my favorites. The big surprise comes in low-pass filter 3. Um, again, dropping the resonance. Let's just bring that back to unity gain, if you will. Um, is that this filter, nice and beefy sound. where it gets interesting. Introducing resonance on this filter definitely causes some, I don't know what to call it, some quirks and it happens pretty well. You could hear that, but I'm only up at about uh, not even two o'clock on the scale. If you, if you think of it as a clock, 
on the resonance. It's certainly not not up enough in the area where we typically break over into that distortion or that rasp, uh, that squeal that you'd get. It's at a very low level. We're starting to break up in, in the filter and the sound. And that's awesome. It, it, it leads to some really interesting tones. That just spoke better than I could. Now if I come down just a little off of that, it, it seems to kick in pretty suddenly. It's a much more traditional filter. Much more musical. Just, just these overtones, incredible overtones right here. There's, there's a breadth of them, and um, there is still quite a bit of room to move to get to uh, full resonance on this. Um, and, and what's interesting is, while it seems to cross over suddenly at just about, just a little short of two o'clock, into this, I don't know, this, this overtone or distortion zone, micro adjustments, which uh, as somebody else pointed out, these knobs are kind of small, micro adjustments aren't necessarily, I, I don't know, it's not the best interface for it, but, but certainly it's doable. Uh, micro adjustments here between the cutoff, the resonance, the envelope amount, and of course, there, therefore the nuances of the envelope itself can lead to some wonderful changes in overtones. there I mean this was an initialized patch so it's it's really just the filter doing its thing um, the slope of the envelope maybe tweaking with it a little bit uh, affecting it I'm not paying too much attention to it at the moment but very interesting filter let's move over to the high pass now the high pass let's see to get the most out of that I'm gonna reverse the envelope slope and um, let's just get some something interesting going on here uh, pass filter and it's weird in a great way and what I mean by that is is once again this resonance very early on almost in this case at 12 o'clock kicks into this distortion this breaking apart this circuit bent sound and um, so to get traditional high pass you almost need to be just to the left of 12 o'clock <laughs> interesting character happening at the very bottom of that range as that filter just dropped off following that envelope. Um, still, at the very, just north of 12 o'clock, I guess I should just mean to the right of 12 o'clock, um, there's all kinds of then dynamic room in front of that to get into all kinds of interesting territory. Listen to some of this. <laughs> 
That's only at about 3 o'clock. This thing goes to about 5.30. Listen to all that character. So what's interesting, I think, about both low-pass filter 3 as well as high-pass filter 1 and only is that um, there's a more musical, traditional range that is um, in a much, despite the fact you got small knobs to begin with, the knobs are tiny, relatively, uh, they are really musically useful in a traditional sense, probably from 12 o'clock and to the left, and then everything from 12 o'clock and to the right, which is a whole half the range, is much more into modular synthesis territory, pushing the extreme, WMD, pick, pick your module that you like, your filter module or your uh, corruption module that you like. That's built all in right here and to me that's quite exciting. Uh, that's not something I've really seen on a production synthesizer. I've certainly achieved it on a production synthesizer by um, utilizing especially synthesizers that have audio inputs where I can modulate a parameter. If, it, if uh, A great example might be the, uh, the Prophet 12. I can, I can modulate a parameter uh, that you wouldn't think by utilizing an external module through the mod matrix. Um, in that case, it might not, not even be audio. It might just be CC uh, or CV coming off of some other uh, modulator, in particular, I, you can't see it in, in this view, but in particular coming off of my Eurorack. But um, very interesting, very interesting filters on this. Bandpass, kind of the same, kind of an oddball. Um, let's see, let's get our filter envelope back to something normal for a bandpass. Let's get the resonance down, just listen to it. Notice that, but to me, that bandpass sounded horrible. Uh, horrible is a strong word, but it, it sounded very weak with no resonance. As soon as we introduced resonance, it brought all kinds of character and life into it. And then once again, with uh, anything to the right of 12 o'clock, introduces wild overtones in a bandpass, which is unique. <laughs> filter to life. More traditional bandpass. So anything, just just even, I'm only right now at about nine o'clock. That sounded like a very musical bandpass. Um, again, bring it up over 12 o'clock. you can hear how that just kicks in almost immediately, very suddenly, although, believe it or not, that's because I'm moving that knob relatively quickly with micro adjustments. There's this, this little zone right between that musical area and that overdriven area, that wild area, where there's all sorts of overtones as you play with the relationship between the cutoff, the resonance, the filter, maybe the key follow. Uh, 
lot of overtones to be had there, and that's in a band pass. So very interesting filters, the high pass, the band pass, low pass three, um, very useful ladder filter, and also on board is just a plain old, plain vanilla, typical subtractive low pass filter. Uh, very musical all the way through its range, nothing surprising. And it's a 24 dB at that. So um, I'm, I guess I'll leave it to you to judge what you think or feel about those filters. Personally, I'm real happy with what I'm seeing on here in that it takes this keyboard into an area of sound design, which may not be the most musical, but it certainly becomes very interesting, very, um, uh, I guess, patch driven, very sound design driven, uh, the kind of stuff I personally love to do. The big reason why I spent uh, untold amounts of money on my uh, Euro rack. And um, here we are getting some of that. And then let's not forget, this keyboard has CV on it, uh, meaning that it interfaces well with whether it be a System 1M or real Eurorack modules. Um, there's a lot of interesting stuff to be had here.